Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Wind Waker Unflooded. I am Joe Kendrick, and this is a 3D modeling fan project of mine where we are reimagining the Kingdom of Hyrule within the world and art style of The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. So today we are directly responding to feedback. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, you may ask, like, how do I decide what to work on next? How do I get ready to model something? And so let me kind of break that down for a second. Um, sometimes I have concept art that I'm going through. Usually I'm, I'm just kind of working from what's in my head. Um, but all the time I am always motivated by your feedback. And so feel free, you know, throughout the course of this project, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't heard me say this, do leave a comment about, you know, about uh, if, if there's something you would have done differently, you know, any kind of positive or negative feedback that you have but also just kind of what you want to see in the project, whether that's pulling locations from other games um, or just like ways to populate the world and add detail, just anything that you have in mind that you think would be cool and would help tell this story of this world of Hyrule right before the Great Flood. You know, as you know from the prologue of the Wind Waker, this is Hyrule um, as Ganon is returning. And so Ganon's tower is built, but the castle, uh, castle town has not been destroyed yet as we see in the prologue. So that's where Wind Waker Unflooded kind of takes place. And that's, you know, what I'm drawing from. But all this to say is that if there's any ideas that you have, any feedback that you have, um, I listen to that. And this video is a direct response to feedback that as I was making the museum, um, I got a comment that it was just looking a bit too square. Now, technically it was a rectangle. Actually, technically it was a rectangular prism. Actually, technically, when it comes to the 3D geometry, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna be that guy. Um, <laughs> the blueprint of it was a rectangle and um, it, it could just, it could be a little bit more interesting. I got the feedback that it would look a little bit better if the museum was a circle, that it would, especially from a, um, a distance looking at the overall shape of Castletown, that that would help it fit into this new rounded shape of the overall Castletown road layout where I, I've just been rounding off things and that's been informing some of the design. Um, I, I just worked on the Castletown market and I was trying really intentionally for that to not be like made on a grid at all. I wanted that to feel very fluid. Like it was just the building was adhering to the shape of the road below it that I'd already kind of figured out, which was all kind of based on a quote unquote curve, right? Not not a curve in, um, in the sense of curves that you would use in Blender, but you know, just geometrically a curve. And it's not even really a curve because everything is made of polygons. Um, but anyway, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I've just, I've been trying to make the castle town feel more fluid and alive. And I think you can do a lot with kind of more rigid shapes, you know, building off on squares and cubes. And that can really be the basis of a lot. Um, and I believe in that, but also we're trying to make something that really feels organic and alive, like it was constructed and, you know, like it exists beyond the, um, the Blender project. And I guess like there, there, there's, I don't, I don't know if there's a word for this, but this feeling that, yes, this is being made as a fan project, this is being made in Blender, but I want the world to not feel limited by that, even though it is limited by that, and it has limitations. I want it to almost feel like a snapshot, a snapshot in a way of a world that, um, that, that we didn't get to see. So this is indicative of a world that is rounded, right? That is, that isn't made by limitations and i want you to feel that as you look at the project i don't i don't know i don't know if there's a better way to say that um because it's not just the fact that this is a fan project and i want it to feel legitimate it's that like this is being made yeah, as, a, as a piece of 3d art and i want it to be a gateway into a world that we never got to see and i want you to in looking at the project i don't want you to just think about it as a piece of 3d art i want you to be thinking about the world that exists you know even though this is just a bunch of polygons i don't know i don't know if there's a better way to put that but that is kind of the goal of this project and these are things that inform my decisions and if there's anything that's distracting you from that or is making it look too much like you know just just an art project and is drawing attention to the limitations of creating it in the software or with with just any kind of limitation with the polygon count whatever it is i don't want you to be thinking about that I, I just want you to be thinking about the world that could exist organically um, that was built on its own in a sense, right? Where I'm not the one who built it, but these Hylians built it 
I want you to think about it that way. But anyway, I think it's time for a short message. So I will talk to all of you again after the break. See you then. If you want to be able to support me as a creator, there's several ways that you can do that. Become a member on Patreon. It gives you access to exclusive bonus features and early access content in all of my filmmaking projects. Stuff like early access to scripts that I'm writing, storyboards, previs, rough cuts, and music that I compose. I'm a composer, and any music that you've heard in the background of this video was my music. So go to Spotify or Apple Music or wherever you listen to music and type in Joe Kendrick. That's J-O-E-K-E-N-D-R-I-C-K. -E -E Look up Joe Kendrick on Spotify. And we're back. Hello, everyone. Just as always, I have to remind you how you can support me as a creator. I don't make any ad revenue from this channel, just so y'all know that. If there was an ad on this video, YouTube might be putting ads on the channel. And, and I disagree with that. For me, the project is completely not monetized. I'm not making a single cent from Wind Waker Unflooded. So if there's any way that you want to be able to support me as an artist, as a creator, you know, donating through Patreon or coffee or listening to my music on Spotify, all of those methods are really meaningful. And I really appreciate everyone who has uh, donated through, the, through those methods. That, that is super meaningful and it helps the creation of everything that I do. So thank you to everyone who's donated. And I just have to, I have to always just say that and remind y'all um, of how, how much that means to me, how important that is um, to me. So, so I, I thank y'all. I thank y'all for that. Um, I'm thinking about what else, how, what else do I want to address with this museum? Uh, oh, oh yeah, there's some new art that I want to show off that I want to draw attention to. Um, so after the, uh, the first museum video that I did, uh, I continued to receive art both from, uh, Mark Speranza, who contributed a lot to, that you saw within the first video. Uh, he did a lot of different panels from kind of retelling the story of the Hero of Time, and I think it's just beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and put on screen, just, just so y'all can see it clearly, all the panels together that he created in telling this wonderful story of the hero of time's life as we see it saw from the events of ocarina of time told within the art style of the wind waker's tapestries and i really like the way he put it together the way he shows the deku tree the um what do you call them the spiritual stones and then all the sages coming together i think that's just i think that's great and it's beautiful and it, it really helps to just show that these legends of zelda exist as legends within their own world as well. And and I think that that's kind of cool that, like sometimes, I don't know, we think about these heroes, right? And we, we see these events that we've seen as players, but these are events that would be mythologized within the world as part of the world itself. It would carry its own mythology, its own lore. It would continue to retell it. Not just from what we saw in game, but those, every time we play as Link and he saves the world, that hero would be a celebrity and they would continue to retell his story throughout their own world until it became legend as we saw as we see within the prologue of the wind waker itself and so now i also want to show off a, uh, a tapestry by pop tart which also kind of carries in that that similar um what am i trying to say that that similar methodology just in the in the idea of what it is right right it's another look at the events of ocarina of time and now we're just kind of putting a magnifying glass on the first boss that the Hero of Time defeats, right? This is kind of, I don't know if there's a moment that you feel like the Hero of Time became a hero. Is it the sealing of Ganon? Is it the pulling of the Master Sword? These different decisions that he had to make, he had to, ma he had to make to show that he was willing to be a hero and save the kingdom. And I think one of those moments, one of those thresholds that he crossed was the defeat of Goma within the Deku Tree. That of course, this was a moment where, you know, he was asked to to help the Deku Tree and he was willing to, you know, pick up his sword and aid in the defeat of this parasite. You know, maybe it wasn't enough to actually save the Deku Tree, but but that, that battle was emblematic of the hero that the hero of time was willing to become. And I think that that was a really important battle. And I just kind of wanted to draw attention to that um, and I'm really glad that that Pop Tart was able to bring that bring that scene to life. So it's been great to incorporate some new um, some new pieces into the museum. I guess that's just what I'm trying to say. And I thank you to everyone who has submitted artwork. And if you're listening and you have some ideas uh, on your own of different pieces of artwork that you might want to create and submit for use within 
this museum in Castle Town, different ways that you might want to depict these legends of Zelda, feel free to shoot me an email or any kind of um, 3D art that you want to make as well. I think it'd be great to kind of show off some more artifacts within the museum as well. Um, I'd love to show off your work and if you're interested in collaborating or, or contributing to the project in any way, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, I think I have my email listed on the about section of this YouTube channel, so feel free to go there. There you'll also find links to, to donate to <laughs> to donate to me as a creator. So feel free to check all of those out on the about section of uh, my, my YouTube page. So without further ado though, I think that's everything that I have to say. Y'all, thank you all so much for watching. And without further ado, I'll let you go.